Hawaii, YouTube, a wayfaring stranger, ROE Nations here. I suppose you've been wondering what I'm doing. Maybe if you have been interested or in following. I got two minutes left for this bread. I'm baking bread. Oh, that needs cleaning. Um, because, oh yeah, the bottom of the oven needs cleaning. But I didn't have another loaf pan, so I had to improvise. Uh, bread is expensive, so I baked bread a lot in my 20s. And um, I made some bread today over here using this little cotton board and that. And I only use King Arthur flour. Here's a new one I bought. Big one. I had decided I'm going back to baking bread like when I was in my 20s because it's really expensive now, bread. Um, and I, I love bread. I'm a bread eater. So, um, yeah. So I'm waiting for that to get done. And October's been a crazy month. It's been very crazy in a way, more so than usual because... Uh, well, the first week in October, I went to church and this man was waiting in the foyer and said that he, um, so you're in, you're from North Carolina. He was listening to me and the pastor talk out and he was the only person in the foyer waiting in there. Everyone else was already in the sanctuary and, uh. I don't know. It just seemed weird. Uh, he asked me if I wanted to sit. I, he said, you can sit with me. And I said, no, thank you. I don't need a, an escort or a warden. That's what came out. Maybe it wasn't the most polite response, but that's what immediately came out before I had time to think about it. It was all serious looking and very kind of spooky, kind of demeanor, sort of like a CIA type emanating off them or something. So anyway, um, then he showed up at the library the following week, the one that I go, go to all the time. And I knew that he lived in a faraway city over 30 miles away. So I asked him what, you know, may I ask you a question when he was coming out of the library on my way in and I'm meeting him a second time there. First time he said he had traveled all over the world. He was sitting there with a laptop and nothing surprised him because I apologized and told him nothing personal. It just seemed like a really inappropriate question because I don't go to church to sit with a man. And, um, well, that was that. So then the next time, uh, I said, I'm sure you meant well. So then the next time I saw him, he was coming out of the library and, uh, all right. So I say, uh, what did you do for work? He said he was a computer engineer. And, um, okay. So then, um, he proceeds to tell me why he told me this. I don't know. But he said, uh, oh, and he was in the Army or Air Force. He, um, said that a woman he was helping he suddenly stopped helping her and two cops came to his house and said he was under invest he was they were we're watching you they said and um you have serious allegations against you for harassment for this woman and then he said um a detective came later another time and wanted him to sign a paper and he said he was going to um, uncheck a lawyer, get a lawyer. I want a lawyer. So then, all right, that's that. Um, he takes off. I go in the library. Then I see two really serious looking, very official looking men in there. One's in the general area and one is in the um, computer room. So I decide not to use it and go do another errand. But the thing is, um, 
Yeah, he said he'd come to this one because it was really quiet. That was his reason for coming like over 30 miles away to this one suddenly. So then um, I went, that's one thing. Then I went to uh, another church and the pastor comes out after because I had refused the study guide. I was new there. I had been invited there. So I go to that one last Sunday. I haven't gone anywhere today. I probably won't try to go anywhere anymore. I know I already said that, but this time I mean it. Um, I come to Bible study. They welcome me. Then they try to give me the study guys. No, I'll just follow along in, in, in this and point to my Bible. Thank you. So then after the study, a woman in, all dressed in black, she's taking time to tell me that you really should have the study guide because then you can follow along. And then I said, well, you no know, scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. And I just make it a habit just to use the Bible. I don't even buy Christian authored books. I don't even like footnotes or, or marginal notes uh, that much. Uh, I just stick to the word of God. But if it really bothers you, I can take it if I ever return. If it'll make you happy. So then she goes, can I give you a hug? So then um, I get, like, we do a hug. So then I went to uh, go walk the dog from the library another day. And I left my big giant white purse. It's really big. It's big. See, it's big. Look what he does to my chair. It's huge. It's kind of heavy. There's not a lot in it. It's got papers and some stuff in it. But anyways, um, yeah, this was in the floorboards. I made a conscious decision to leave it on the floorboards of the, um, of the truck. So I could walk the dog like a free spirit out that I am. And we walked up to the little park like 35, 40 feet away. So then we walked back. I had borrowed a phone from a gentleman. They asked about my Honda that I needed towed. Uh, where's the key to it? I said, I already changed the batteries. It's in my purse in my truck. And then the tall thin man he was with took off suddenly. So then I noticed he went off with his phone. He kept touching and doing stuff on standing up, not relaxed. But the, the man whose phone I borrowed that was very nice, um, he was sitting down on the bench. And it was a bench that was really uh, small. And he was a big, good-sized man. I didn't have the purse. I didn't put it on that bench. Uh, I had no purse. So then I went back and walked to my truck, and I realized that the, the purse was missing from the front of the truck on the floorboard. Can't believe it. Then I go in the library and say, you won't believe this, but someone took my purse out of my truck. Can I use the phone to call the police? So they say, yes, of course, you know. And then I call them. And then I go and walk while I'm waiting for the police to come to take a report at the library. I walk back up there real quick, and there's my purse sitting on the bench that the man had been on. The man is gone. The other man's not, not there either. And uh, one tattoo girl's whispering like this to another one as I'm approaching. And then I go and take it, and I say, did you see anyone here? And what, what? And so she jumps off and comes toward me saying, what? And I said, did you see anyone at this, touch this purse? And she said, no. So then I nagged her and just went. I wasn't going to tangle with her. I went straight back, and I went to use the phone to call them and tell them they don't need to come out for the report, and they go calling me at the library. And I said, how come you're calling me? Well, because we wanted to see if you found it, and you still need to do the report. So I said, oh, no, I, I guess, you know, it was up there, and I don't need to do a report. But I know it was up there, because on my way back home, I said, I'm going to stop, because I saw the man again with the other man. And he said, no, you did not have it. And I said, thank you for confirming my memory. Thank you for confirming and verifying my memory. And the other man said, no, you didn't have it. Seems no, I just seen a while ago, it had something else there, too. I said it was a decorative pillow, and that wasn't there. And he wouldn't have left. I knew he was the type of man just leave it there if I had left it either. He wouldn't have just left the purse there. Everybody in the picking, everybody in that park that was musicians that play were all gathered too. 
when I came to get that purse, all gathered in quiet up by the public restroom in one corner of the park, they had all changed where they were, like they were waiting, like everybody was in on it or something. The only thing I can think of is there was an illegal search done using the two girls to transport it up there to see what's in the purse because maybe they thought I had my gun in an unlocked vehicle, which I would never be that irresponsible and do that. But I did mention I had a gun in my trunk one day when I was stopping visiting someone at a propane place and I was going to go camping. I said, it's in the trunk, in my purse in the trunk. Because, you know, that's where my tent and propane Coleman stove was and sleeping bag. I didn't end up going camping though, but that's weird because why did they want to take the purse? Nothing was missing, but I did have to get a new car registration for my Honda. That was kind of gone. Then there's passwords. They're all at risk now too. I don't know. It wasn't a long time that they had it, but this is just part of my month. Oh, and the person who uh, visited me before my Ollie was killed, she visited again this month and told me to keep all my dogs locked up. And uh, Fitzgerald, um, he's my baby. I love him. They were all my babies. He's probably my best dog. Fitzgerald is blind in one eye suddenly, but I don't know what it is, what caused it. But he's having trouble with one eye right now. This is his bed. Is your eye okay? It's still running. Something's wrong with his eye. I don't know what's wrong with it. But suddenly it's like leaking all these white mucus. And I've been putting salt cloths on it. He keeps rubbing it. He has something wrong with his eye, so pray for Fitzgerald, because his eye seems injured. So, keep up your watching over your selves and your property, and let the Lord bless you and keep you. And I know that he is sovereign over all my property and health and my affairs, and he will see to it. Until the day he comes again. I hope you're all doing well. I can't really upload things very often. I thought I'd check in and ask you all to pray for my Fitzgerald. For his eye. And I'm going to go see how that bread came out. Hope you all have a blessed day. Shalom. <laughs>